Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, and in this third video for today, we're going to, I bet people are tired of seeing this outfit. <laughs> um, I, we're going to talk about taking photographs in Second Life. And I wanna provide everyone just a few uh, tips that I use um, to take photographs. Uh, so let's go ahead and leave my wardrobe side of my skybox and head over to the studio side of my skybox, which is really just set up with um, some places that I can do various scenes and, and, and stuff for photographs. And we're going to come over here to just this very simple photo studio, and um, we're going to look at stuff here. And it's got a black background because um, I want to be able to show people today how to um, take photographs against a black background and still have plenty of lighting. Uh, so a few tips that I want to talk about and a few things that I do when I'm setting up to take photographs in Second Life. Um, so first things first, we're going to hop over to my wardrobe and we're going to go ahead and uh, come down here to my P and you can see I've got poses divided up in a number of different ways. I've got avatar poses which are singles and I've got couples poses which are uh, anything that has more than one a lot of adult poses in there <laughs> uh, but we're gonna look at just the single poses for today so I've got these all in here and I can very quickly see what I have and then pull out one that I want to use so we're actually going to I think just go ahead and use um, one of these let's see hmm. Gosh, I don't know. We'll go ahead and pick one. Um, but we'll go ahead and maybe use one from uh, Le Poppycock because um, I think they're kind of nice uh, and, and they're fun. Um, all right, so let's switch back over here. And I come in here and I've got these, not in my RLV folder, but they're still up in animations, avatar poses by store. And I can come up here and find the ones based on what I saw in there. I'm going to go with Hello Day B and I'm going to go ahead and choose Heart and Bloom. And right click on that and choose play in world. All right, so now I've got my pose set up here. I'm on my little backdrop and I've got this weird shadow on my face. So we need to fix that. And we're going to fix that by adjusting our wind light. Uh, so my first suggestion to everybody is use your wind light editor and not just to pick one, but actually come into sky presets and choose edit. And the reason for this is what I want you to do when you're taking photos is get used to the idea of selecting something, seeing how it looks, and then coming into this lighting and adjusting the angles on it so that you get the right shadows, adjust the sun position so that the shadows sit where, where you want them to. Uh, maybe we'll make it more evening. No, I think it was better this way in the morning sun. Um, adjust that so it just hits my face just the way I want it to there. Perfect, okay. Uh, and you can adjust anything you want to here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of close this down. I'm not gonna close out of it all together because if I do that without saving, then my changes will go away. So I just sort of minimize that out of the way there. And then I'm gonna adjust my body the way I want to be. There go, that's perfect. Okay, now, so I've got this in here the way I want, okay and I could take a picture. Now when I'm taking a picture, what I want to do is I want to frame myself up the way I want it to be, and then Control shift s to bring up my snapshot floater. So there I am, I've got my black background, I've got my nice lighting, uh, shadows are we're looking good. Uh, let's actually jump into preferences here quick, Control p and we're going to look at graphics preferences, advanced settings. So I have a, a set of settings that I use when I am uh, taking photographs. And I actually have this under a graphics quick preference called photography, which is what I'm using right now. And I set my draw distance as high as possible because I want anything that's in my background to show up correctly. I cannot stress enough though, don't walk around <clears throat> with your draw distance this high. Uh, it will just kill your viewer to have it this high. Uh, but I'm really, I'm set on, if you look at back here, I'm set on ultra. Um, I want to keep that uh, on ultra as much as possible when I'm taking photographs. Uh, it keeps everything up the way I want it to be. My water reflections are set to everything. I have it set to do all of advanced lighting except for depth of field. I usually will add depth of field in post-processing because I don't think it shows up very well coming out of the viewer. 
Another one you're going to want to set as high as you can is this anti-aliasing. This is what helps get rid of jagged lines. Um, again, this is another one that will kill your performance if you walk around with it this high. Uh, but And you don't really need it for most things. But for photography, you can get it up to 8x or 16x. That's the best as possible. Anyway, so I've got that set up here. Let me come back to my snapshot. So I'm going to save this to disk. All right. And when I save it to disk, the rule for photography is you want as much information and detail as possible. You want to take as large of an image as your computer will let you take. Okay. And to do that, what I suggest is that you set your snapshot to the current window. And this is going to give you the size of your monitor, basically the size of your current display. 1920 by 1057 is mine and you want constrained proportions on unless you really want to take a square photo for example and you want to take your photo with the numbers at least three times the size of your default display if you can get up either to four or five times it's even better you get more information so 5760 is three times that size okay so what we're doing is we are just capturing a ton of information as much color data as much resolution as we possibly can out of our screen and we want that because when we get into post-processing when we get into photoshop and we want to crop this down and we want to modify it and we want to go in there and smooth it and liquefy it and do all those fun things that we can do with filters we want to give photoshop lots of data to work with so we want this set as high as we possibly can and then we can save it um, and and we're done okay so let me back out of this because i want to show some other things that we can do Okay, so I've got my pose here. Let's say though that I don't like sort of this harsh wind light that's going on. And I want something that's really dark. And I want to provide my own shadows and my own light. Maybe I want to take just a, a face picture. Okay, so we're going to come in here and we're going to choose um, a wind light by default that's very, very dark or that we can make very, very dark. Uh, let's see here. What do we want to do? Well, we can choose midnight. Not so bad. And we can choose midnight. We've still got this sort of odd shadow here. We're going to go ahead and change this. Where is that coming from? Oh, you know where that's coming from? It's coming from this. We're going to talk about this in a minute. So let me go ahead and make that a zero because we're going to use this in just a second. All right. So we've got our wind light. It's nice and dark, and that's that's good. Okay, but notice now uh, this is exactly what I want to show. Notice how um, I don't have the best shadows going on here. Uh, let me change this to six. Yeah, let's make this six a.m. And I'll go ahead and reduce that. So I've got I don't know. I I, I look terrible, right? I'm I'm totally dark and in shadow. How do we make ourselves look good? Well, that's what this thing here that was kind of hiding is for. And this is called a light projector. And a light projector is nothing more than a prim in Second Life that uses the advanced lighting model to throw light in a particular direction. And to build this, you don't have to make it a triangle pyramid thing like I did. Uh, it can be any prim. What you're going to do is you're going to build a prim. You're going to go to the uh, Features tab. And down here at the bottom, is this check mark for light. If I turn that on, I can create directional light anywhere I want it to be. And there are two different options that I want to talk about. There's lots of different things you can do with intensity. I can make it less intense so it's not so bright. I can make it have a smaller radius, things like that. And you can play with these over time. So there are two options here I want to look at. The first one is color. Let's say I want to have sort of a soft red light. And change the color on that you get sort of a soft red light maybe i want a soft blue light something that's not so harsh as white or i want a, a a bit of a yellow light like the sun maybe i can add color to that i'm going to change it back to white for now the second thing though is this box and this is basically a texture selection a texture selector and you can buy these textures on marketplace they cost like 99 lindens it's really cheap uh just search for um light projector textures and look for these ones by DT. These are really good. 
And these basically let you apply effects. So let's say I want to have a soft circle of light. So it's putting a texture in there. Or maybe I want to have a soft square of light. I can do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and change it to a medium circle for now. And notice that as I move this closer and further away, I can shadow my body or put it in some light. I'm going to go ahead and change my projector to 100% alpha, which is why I couldn't see it there. I forgot it was there. So now it's not in my frame. But now I've got this sort of completely black wind light, black background, and I can come in here and I've got the shadows just where I want them, and I can take a, a portrait photo. Again, Control Shift S. Save to disk. I want as much resolution as possible. Save as. And we're going to call this sample. And there you go. So those are my tips uh, for, for taking pictures. Um, uh, set yourself to ultra. Set that anti-aliasing as high as you possibly can. Make sure advanced lighting model is enabled. Make sure shadows are enabled, if at all possible. Uh, get your settings as high as you possibly can for taking photos. And then play with your wind light. Adjust the angle. Adjust where the sun sits in the sky. Uh, if you don't want to do that, create your own light projector. Don't worry about buying a fancy studio. Those fancy photo studios, they use light projectors that you can buy for 99 lindens from that DT store and a single prim that you can create for free. And if you want to have five different lights, you can just copy your prim five different times uh, and create five different light projectors. Um, for a studio, you don't need anything fancy. You can create a backdrop like this. I think this actually is a free one that I got off of Marketplace. But you can create just a, a photo backdrop like this one here. Let me change my sun back to region. So you can create this and just add your own textures to it and res furniture, whatever else you need into that to create your own photo studio. You can get into photography super, super cheap. Um, but doing these things creates really, really nice photos um, for you to work with. Uh, let me take a quick uh, jump out and um, I'll show you really quick what this photo that I just took will look like in the photo editor. Be right back. Okay, so I use uh, an online photo editor called PicMonkey, and I use it because it's easy for me. Um, I don't really want to take the time to learn Photoshop, um, and um, this is, it, it's not free. Uh, I do have to pay for it to get the full set of features. Uh, but it works really well for me. And so I can come in and you know, I can say, you know, I just want to get um, a nice square photo here. And I'm going to go ahead and line it up a little bit on that and choose apply so that crops it down. And I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I want to um, zoom in on my eyes, and I really want my eyes to stand out. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little brightness to my eyes and apply that. Zoom back out. And I'll come over here. And these are just some general filters. Let's say I want to go ahead and soften this overall image, which is a great effect, I think, for Second Life because no matter how smooth you get things, there's still always a few jagged edges. And maybe I want to go ahead and, um, I don't know, let's go ahead and put in just a simple filter here, fade it out a little bit more. And then I'll just go ahead and put um, dark edges along the edge. Up the intensity there. Anyway, so very quick and fast and easy to go in and edit the photos. But again, the, the goal in taking this photo was to give this software, any software that you use, as much detail as possible to work with so that if you go in and you want to adjust um, 
the actual levels, channels of color that are there. It has plenty of detail to work with so that you can get lots of different options in terms of how it, it plays out. Um, and if you don't have enough detail in the photo originally, you end up with, um, with a photo that you can't really manipulate a whole lot. So, um, anyway, so I just wanted to, to show this quick again. It doesn't really matter if you're going to do this in an online tool or in GIMP or in Photoshop or whatever it is. The same methods for taking the photo initially stand. You want to give yourself plenty of, of room to, um, to work. All right, so let me go ahead and just save my changes. I'm done. And let me come back over here. Got my pose there. Go ahead and close all of this down. And if I want to, I could upload this into Second Life. And there it is. Anyway, uh, so that's what I want to talk about today uh, with photography. And hopefully you... Uh, learned a tip or a trick or two that will help improve your photography and um, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun. It really is a, a great deal of fun to go out and, and take photos of avatars or of landscapes and the same sort of uh, rules apply to to all of those no matter what you're doing. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like or subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.